The Queen's Gambit is an American novel by Walter Tevis, exploring the life of a female chess prodigy. A Bildungsroman, or coming-of-age story, it was originally published in 1983. It covers themes of feminism, chess, drug addiction, and alcoholism. The book was adapted for the 2020 Netflix miniseries of the same name starring Anya Taylor-Joy. The novel's epigraph is The Long-Legged Fly by William Butler Yeats. This poem highlights one of the novel's main concerns, the inner workings of genius in a woman. Tevis discussed this concern in a 1983 interview, 1-2, the year before his death. The Queen's Gambit traces chess prodigy Beth Harmon's life from her childhood in an orphanage through her struggles with tranquilizer and alcohol addiction to her triumphant rise through the Grandmaster ranks. Eight-year-old orphan Beth Harmon is quiet, sullen, and by all appearances unremarkable, until she plays her first game of chess. Her senses grow sharper, her thinking clearer, and for the first time in her life she feels herself fully in control. By the age of 16, she's competing for the U.S. Open Championship. But as she hones her skills on the professional circuit, the stakes get higher, her isolation grows more frightening, and the thought of escape becomes all the more tempting. The novel is difficult to classify, occupying a space between thriller, sports-slash-game novel, and Bildungsroman. The Queen's Gambit is sheer entertainment. It is a book I re-read every few years, for the pure pleasure and skill of it. It is also highly praised for the technical accuracy of its depictions of chess. New Yorker's reviewer was especially enthused with the novelist's recreation of the obsessive world of chess, noting that Tevis does succeed in conveying the cerebral suspense with which would-be world champions live. Harold C. Schoenberg, writing in the New York Times Book Review, confirmed that Tevis reveals a great deal about the world of American chess, with a final glance at how the Russians operate, and it is an exceptionally accurate picture that he draws. Schoenberg added, Beth Harmon may not be prepossessing, but she has the dedication of a biblical saint, a freak memory and an ability to synthesize and create and blow her little world apart with a kind of startling originality that nobody else can match. That is what chess on its highest level is all about. From Contemporary Authors Online, 2007, Gale Reference. Tevis based the chess scenes on his own experience as a Class C player and on his long study of the game. He elaborates on this in the author's note for the novel. The superb chess of Grandmasters Robert Fisher, Boris Spassky and Anatoly Karpov has been a source of delight to players like myself for years. Since The Queen's Gambit is a work of fiction, however, it seemed prudent to omit them from the cast of characters, if only to prevent contradiction of the record. I would like to express my thanks to Joe Ankrile, Fairfield Hoban, and Stuart Morden, all excellent players, who helped me with books, magazines, and tournament rules. And I was fortunate to have the warm-hearted and diligent help of National Master Bruce Pandolfini in proofreading the text and in helping me rid it of errors concerning the game he plays so enviably well. Some Criticisms from Edward Winter the author, tends to show insufficient ingenuity in his artificially stylized accounts of chess tournaments, for example lack of draws and, in the interests of suspense, having Beth meet all her strongest opponents in the final round. 3. In 1983, an attempt was made to turn the novel into a feature film when the New York Times journalist Jesse Kornbluth acquired rights for a screenplay, nearly every actor and director that he knew was interested in participating. 4. When Tevis died in 1984, rights to the film were sold to another studio and the project was called off owing to financial concerns.